Hello, you're watching the Telecom TV Summit on the Green Network and our panel discussion on measuring and monitoring power consumption in networks. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content. Now it's becoming increasingly important that telcos are able to accurately determine network power consumption and then share those results with the wider community. Energy usage must decrease, it's that simple. But how do we measure and monitor our progress? Well, with the help of today's guests, we are going to try and find out. And joining me today are Sawa Khan, who is Senior Manager Global Digital Sustainability at BT Global. Anna Kurosea, who is Head of Sustainability for Rakuten Symphony. Terry Jensen, SVP Network and Cloud Technology Strategy at Telenor. Matthias Fridström, Vice President and Chief Evangelist at Aurelian. And Gil Hellman, Vice President, Telecom Solutions Engineering and Architecture at Wind River. Welcome everyone, good to see you all. Thanks so much for taking part in our discussion. Now, the first thing I'd like to ask is, are there adequate systems in place today for telcos to measure the energy output and hence the efficiency of their networks. Matthias, perhaps we could come to you for a comment first. Uh, I think there are parts of our network that is very well measured. You know, the data center industry have been very good at measuring their energy consumption in data centers. And of course, we as telecom operators buy a lot of services from them. There are though a lot of things that we lease from others that's not measured very well. Uh, that's very hard to measure and we don't really share so therefore, you know, the, the thing we're using on transatlantic cables, for instance, how much power we consume when we repair cables. There's a lot of stuff that we don't measure today. So therefore, asking a telecom operator today how much power they consume, I don't think anyone can really tell you. They can tell you portions of it, but they can't tell you the full story. So we do measure some stuff, but there's a lot more to measure. Yeah, that's very, very interesting, uh, Matthias. It, it, it does seem that we, we you know, we, we touched on something here that is, um, as an industry, we need to do a lot of work to improve. So uh, there's, there's, uh, there's comments uh, coming in from uh, Terrier and, and, uh, and Gil and, and Sawa. So Gil, let me come to you first for some ad additional comments on, on this really critical question. Sure, absolutely. Uh, thanks. Uh, so looking at it, uh, Matthias mentioned the data center from the software side. To start with, there is different element in the network that consume, and there is the one that consume a lot more power than others. Um, I think a good start will be to start to measure um, the one that we know that consume a lot of power. For example, the radio unit uh, consume relatively the, the highest amount of power within the in the system in the in the wireless network. The data center it's the other part. Um, when you look at the data center, when you look, for example, at an edge data center. Uh, with the transition to disaggregation and cloudification, okay, you can measure those things through programmatically through software. So pretty much all the, the, the servers architecture that exists today that are in operation through standards like Redfish, for example, you can basically measure very accurately the power consumption and you can basically even associate it to an application level. So meaning say, you know, if I have an application that consumes this amount of cores and this type of peripherals, okay, how much power it consumed, okay? So, in a, you know, to the extent where you have multiple types of application, let's, for example, take a VDU and a VC running on the same server, how much power each one of them consumed, okay? And I think this would be a good starting point where you measure the power of the, the parts that consume the highest amount, you know, of course, striving to get to a point that you can measure the end to end the complete power consumption. Thank you, Gil. And Sawa, um, you know, from your perspective, are there adequate systems in place? Are it, do we have a good starting point today? Yeah, great, great question, Guy. I mean, our research and network strategy team in Industrial Park have actually developed an advanced capability and energy monitoring tool for um, our networks. And this capability is moving towards building a digital twin of our networks. It combines um, reported network equipment usage figures with meter data at the building level to help us assess our impact. So as well as getting visibility of the um, existing energy output, the model also looks to combine 
a number of other different data points to look at what could be the, the potential future output. And, and for us as a, as a telco, the information is really important as a way to drive energy efficiency across networks. It enables us to do um, things such as enabling low power networking or uh, enabling power saving modes uh, within our equipment when sites are not being used. Um, it also enables, to, enables us to intelligently shut down radio equipment um, to ensure that we can keep power consumption flat despite growth in the, the, the data traffic. Uh, and uh, probably um, for us, what, what is really important is the fact that uh, by doing so, by consuming this energy information from the network, it actually will help to contribute to some of our own net zero commitments. But we're taking that one step further. We're looking at how do we leverage the learnings um, from this energy data to help customers optimize um, their own land and one estate uh, for sustainability through through some of these uh, shared learnings. Thank you very much, Sawat. Some um, interesting comments there about the uh, use of digital twins. Anna, let me come across to you for, for, for your thoughts about um, whether or not we have the adequate systems in place today. Yeah, it's very interesting to see that uh, it seems that uh, all participants of this uh, forum, right, uh, facing uh, face the similar uh, issues and are also looking into similar solutions. So um, in, in Japan, in Rakuten Mobile, we have um, the first um, uh, in the world uh, cloud native uh, open RAN software centric mobile network built, uh, run and operating um, end to end, right? So, and we have a lot of data there and we monitor um, our network performance live in real time. And what we are looking into to include um, energy consumption as one additional KPI. We were looking also into the developing a digital twin, uh, also not only for monitoring uh, energy consumption, but also for forecasting it, right? So because um, that could uh, help us make uh, more appropriate decisions uh, in the network, future network build out as well. And um, I think the uh, the biggest uh, issue what we are facing now, there is no aggregated tool currently, right? That would uh, put it all in one place. And uh, that that that's basically what we are focusing our efforts um, on on uh, creating that tool that would also um, bring certain alarm system uh, to show you in real time where the energy consumption could be reduced, maybe also using the closed loop uh, uh, automation solution, right? So, and uh, would lead us to further uh, um, the autonomous uh, network development. Thank you, Anna. And I'll, I'm going to come back and pick up on what you said in just a moment. But first, I just want to go across to, to Terrier for, for Terrier's views on what we have today and whether or not we've got adequate systems in place. No, I think, I think my, uh, my view is that, uh, yes, the systems are good enough to start with. Uh, of course, there are uh, missing parts of it. I think Matthias started with, uh, with some of this and, and Anna also, also highlighted some areas. So, but good enough to start with, I think, you both monitor and attract uh, the consumptions on the individual level. I think on equipment sites, uh, domains, functional areas, uh, buildings, uh, trans uh, and data centers, and whatever, I think. Then, of course, uh, comes uh, the question about the purpose uh, of, uh, of monitoring and measuring the energy output. I think we also discussed that. Uh, is it all energy optimization, or is it related to the different scopes, for example, on the, on the climate, or is it on the, on the benchmarking and, and forecasting? So. So uh, there, there are, I think, uh, tools in place. It's also important, I think, I think Jill mentioned that uh, what we have at least done on, on our side, focusing on the, on the big spenders in the ter terms of energy, which uh, definitely is uh, on, the, on the radio access side when it comes to mobile operators. So roughly three quarter of the energy consumed is actually linked with the, somehow with the base stations, so with the sites. That's an average number across a number of, of operators. So, so it's important to focus on that, and then of course we can use all uh, all smartness and intelligence in order to uh, further opt optimize that. But uh, let's uh, we have started, so I think it's uh, and it's a great achievement. So let's not wait for the per perfect picture or set of tools, but uh, let's work with the tools we have. Great points there, Terry. Thanks very much, and thanks everyone for for those comments. So look, we've, we've got a good starting point then. I, th I think we a lot of us agree we. we we have things in place today, but we, there's more we obviously can do. Anna, I want to come back to what you, you've mentioned because I want to look next at what else we can do to improve these tools. And 
you know, you've mentioned some things in your previous answer there of how we can improve, but are there any you know, major obstacles that may prevent us from doing so? Yeah, I think um, one of the major obstacles is maybe uh, the uh, missing external push, right? Because if we look into other industries, how um, the the data uh, reliability and publishing of data uh, developed right in time, um, was that there was certain external push. So let, let, let's uh, put it this way. Um, imagine we would have a certain profit and loss statement of our energy consumption. Maybe we add on uh, also other environmental uh, factors that we are contributing to as an organization, right? So um, uh, having that, uh, the governments might be able to uh, ask for a certain carbon tax, right? So, um, and, and that would push developing more precise tools um, in measuring energy, right? So, for example, another push could come from consumers as well. And there we can also look in other industries, like, for example, consumer good industries, right? So, um, the, the challenge with telecommunication services is that um, Everyone uses it, right? It's almost like a utility uh, product, but it's not really tangible. So we don't see it. We don't unpack it when we buy it. When the customers uh, unpack uh, their ordered goods online, for example, right? They see how much waste they produced and um, they might change the provider of uh, online delivery uh, service. But um, that doesn't happen necessarily with telecommunication uh, services just because we cannot touch it. And I think, um, this definitely can help us improve improve the tools um, while creating certain yeah profit and loss statement of energy consumption. Yeah, thanks so much, Anne. That's that's interesting, isn't it, about the, the visibility of, of products and services and what you can see and, and what uh, psychologically goes goes through consumers' heads. Uh, Matthias, let me come across to you for some uh, extra comments on this question. Yeah, no, I think I think the. The, the what things I realize right now is that we are very different as telecom operators and therefore it's hard to measure and hard to develop a measurement tool that fits everyone. Uh, a lot of people in the panelists are mobile operator. We are a carrier that runs optical network and IP networks pretty much all over the globe and therefore it's extremely hard to measure everything. Uh, I coming back to these outages as well, you know, there's a lot of power consumed when we repair our cables and therefore Obviously, that's very hard to measure, you know, how much diesel, how much batteries, how much uh, are you consuming when you repair the network? So developing a tool that fits everything is going to be very, very difficult. And it's always in the end going to be a mishmash of everything. And, and for a telecom operator to tell everyone how much power they consume, that's going to be hard. Yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right there, Matthias. This is very, very difficult. And uh, all, all operators, there's a range of, of types of operators, as you've correctly identified there. Well, look, assume we have the measurements, assume we get these measurements and we get usable measurements. Is there a process in place today for telcos to share this data within the community, amongst its peers? Some kind of process that would help us all collectively to understand the energy use of telecoms networks terry you know you've got such experience here you know what, what, what are you what are you seeing is, is, is there a process that exists today to do this i, I think it's uh, it's not probably not, not fair to ask about uh, the one process uh, i think it's also back to what matthias uh, mentioned just to know that uh, that there are a number of domains uh, and there probably is no fora or, or body or, or whatever to, to, to capture all these domains, spanning from international uh, connections, for example, on fiber to all the way to, to in-building systems, for example, and so forth. Uh, so so uh, at least I am not aware of one process uh, and I'm a bit surprised if there will be one process uh, today on, on this. But having said that, of course, there, there are, uh, coming back to my previous input as well, I think it's important to, to focus on the on the on the big areas, uh, and there are uh, there are initiatives uh, to uh, to share, uh, and we can argue about whether we should call it benchmarking or not. But at least uh, there are initiatives to share information about uh, how we are doing, uh, and uh, there are a number of uh, bodies, SMA, for example, and IUT, uh, which are working on energy efficiency defining framework, how to uh, how to. Uh, report this, how to, to benchmark even to, to some extent uh, the, the number of, uh, of domains. So, so uh, some uh, yeah, comparison, I would say it's fair to say, 
Uh, of course, we are also uh, sharing on a, on a one-to-one -one level with uh, with operators and also with with vendors and whoever are uh, relevant to 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 share on on, on this case. It's uh, very hard, and we probably come back to the next question, I guess, on the on the benchmarking and and the, because this to some extent have been worked on, but there is not again one way to define the the how to share it. And then comes the question about. Uh, if there's not one way to share it, uh, what's the value of sharing in a way? Uh, and, and I also have a, have a view on that. It's uh, it's uh, good also to learn from others on on the mechanisms and and, and activities you should uh, you should implement. For example, what kind of features you should activate on the, on a mobile network in order to uh, improve energy efficiency. So uh, without without sharing the numbers, of course, there are um, there are findings from uh, from applying different mechanisms or features. Uh, and that, of course, we're also sharing with uh, with partners, uh, whether that being operators or, or suppliers, for example. Yeah, thanks, Terry. And as you say, there's different organisations doing uh, doing sterling work in, in various areas. Maybe not one. There's not one initiative, but there, there are there are several doing uh, a lot of good work. Things like the NGMN, for example. Uh, Gil, can I come across to you first, uh, and and uh, then we'll get some more um, comments from our panelists. Absolutely. I want to add to Terry's uh, comment. Uh, for example, in Oran, um, we're working on uh, exactly measuring the powered energy efficiency of the VDU, VCU side of things. So meaning more the basement side of things. And, and uh, there's multiple uh, uh, basically uh, uh, contributors in Oran, uh, specifically in Workgroup 6 that works about it and sharing the outcome, basically the data that we're finding. Uh, and especially more, call it, uh, you know, trying different uh, features or different, uh, you know, in the network to optimize the network and the power, the energy efficiency and what was the result. And, you know, the energy consumption, especially of the radio uh, side, it's highly affected by how you operate the network, by the usage of the network. And the data of how of the usage, first of all, it's different from one operator to another operator, from one region to another region, depend on the customers, depend on all kinds of parameters. And it's also many operators may consider this as more, let's say, uh, um, you know, uh, confidential information for various reasons. Okay, so it becomes more challenging to basically associate the number of the energy efficiency and say, if I use this amount of users and they do this type of, uh, you know, uh, the traffic patterns are such and such, this is how much power it will consume. Okay, um, but what it's been shared and there is work being done there and it's increasing, it's basically call it the best practices of what can you do uh, with regard to features and how to use them to reduce the energy efficiency or sorry to achieve a higher energy energy efficiency to reduce the energy consumption so for example will be you know and um, if you use these particular features that exist in the let's say the cpu architecture and you you toggle them uh, you know dynamically it can reduce let's say save you energy by 10 or 15 percent there was a mention about the closed loop for example and um, so Again, measuring this information, feeding into a closed loop. I'll give you an example. A, a typical baseband uh, unit, um, or you know, in the 5G architecture, will be a VDU and a VCU. Okay, uh, it's built to serve a max capacity, which actually only a portion of the day will be uh, using the max capacity. Most of the time of the day, you have a lot of compute power that it's sitting, let's say, uh, idle or not fully used. Okay, so the ability to toggle the, the energy profile of the data center or the edge data center dynamically based on historical data as well as based on real-time data that is coming, okay, based on how many connected users, this is, a, you know, through a closed loop, this will save you a lot of energy efficiency. And, and initial numbers that we're starting to see, it's quite significant. It's within the 10, 15 uh, percent uh, savings. Thank you, Gil. And it's encouraging that a lot of this feedback works its way into the specifications groups as, as well. Uh, Anna, let's come across to you for, for comments. Yeah, this is um, uh, these were great comments from um, from colleagues. Uh, what I wanted to add was, um, I guess it comes to the level of granularity we are looking at, right? So, because uh, a lot of companies voluntarily um, publish the information about the energy consumption, but on a very high level, 
following, for example, GRI framework, um, reporting framework, right, or um, SASB reporting framework. But um, what we noticed when we were trying to benchmark different telecommunication companies is um, that there is no no really standardized way, it seems, how, how the information is compiled because um, relatively comparable uh, at the first glance networks uh, were reporting very different uh, numbers and also those numbers would include, for example, not only energy consumption of the whole network but also of their different offices uh, if they have uh, multiple offices locations or lab uh, and what's so not right so um the interesting thing would be probably like imagine you would have uh, a, an equivalent of a drive test but for energy consumption of the network where some uh, reliable third party would would publish reports right about the um, different networks so that um, everyone could actually benefit and and see maybe what um, other um, um, other like vitals uh, around the network um, contribute to the energy consumption right so uh, the more data uh, publicly available we would have uh, the faster we learn uh, how how to measure how to improve the energy consumption levels i think yeah absolutely great point Simona. thanks very much and matthias let's come across to you for for some comments on uh, on, on this collaboration aspect yeah, no, uh, one of the things, you know, actually in the autumn, we spent some time on looking at the 40 largest suppliers to us of some telecom services that includes power. And we asked them, you know, if they were really ready to share their goals and their consumption with us. And, and actually 73% of them said that they would be able to do that. We haven't seen that yet. That's for 2023 to sort out. But at least uh, two thirds of the suppliers we have are ready to start to share some data. Then, as Anna said, you know, it's very hard to what type of data do you really share uh, and, and finding out so you measure the right things. But at least there is an interest in the industry to share some data. There's some stuff is proprietary and, and scary, but, you know, hopefully we can start to share some data. Thanks very much, Matthias. Well, this brings us on to how do we benchmark this data? You know, how do we know what's a good figure and what's a bad one? What targets we are aiming to achieve? Sawa, let me come to you first, because this is a tricky subject. The whole issue of, of benchmarking is a little bit contentious. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from, from what we've heard from the other panelists, I think it's fair to say benchmarking is not that easy across the industry. Um, the way the telcos deploy the inf infrastructure differs across the board. So I think what is really key here is to agree the outcome we want to achieve as an industry. So um, I guess there's one commonality across the sector, and, and that's probably something along uh, the lines of climate and decarbonization. So I guess if, um, if it's all about minimizing our impact on the environment and also our customers, then we should ensure that any energy data information that we collect, it's linked back to a standard like um, the greenhouse gas protocol. Um, and, and the greenhouse gas protocol, it, it defines how uh, to account for carbon emissions across the different scopes, scope one, two, and three. And, and I guess the key here is if we're talking about targets, then, um, C complying with something like the greenhouse gas standard ensures we can link um, the industry benchmark towards a, a sector net zero target. Now, this is really important because I think uh, it will help drive standardization because there is sector guidance for how to measure emissions from ICT, but it also helps to drive transparency and um, not only providing uh, or demonstrating how a company is performing against its own net zero target for reporting, but it also gives visibility to, uh, to customers who are consuming network services in terms of the impact um, the telcos are having on them as they need to report on their supply chain emissions, their scope three emissions. Thanks very much, Sawa, for, for those comments. And uh, as you say, it's like, what is the outcome? Let's focus on what the outcome is to, uh, and work towards that. Terry, let's get some uh, additional thoughts from you on benchmarking. 
Yeah, thanks. So no, no, I think it's a it's a good uh, good question, and, and we are just to understand me correctly, we are all for uh, you know reporting and, and making transparent uh, what we are doing and our achievements. Uh, and it, of course, everything you also are reporting also gets a bit of a focus and attention. So that's that's a good thing. Uh, uh, just very quickly on the we did an activity on sharing and so-called benchmarking within the, we did other other operators, and it turns out. Depending on the on the benchmarking uh, parameter you actually look into, there was a, a span one to ten. Uh, so, so uh, of course, these were you know looking at operators uh, uh, in uh, Europe and in Southeast Asia and, and in Africa. Uh, so, for example, looking into energy per unit traffic, uh, like uh, kilowatt hours per per gigabyte, for example, there was a factor one to ten. Uh, on on, uh, on on where we are. Then, of course, comes the question: So what? What do we do with it? And I think also going back to what I think what uh, Giles saying that uh, it it needs to be normalized. Uh, and normalization of uh, in in order to to do real benchmarking, it might not be very trivial in this case, given that the operators are working in different climate conditions, there are different geographical or demographic uh, conditions, there are regulatory obligations, and so forth. And then of course. The simple fact that uh, you know combinations of 2G, 3G, 4G, and 5G comes with different uh, energy consumption. So, so doing a true benchmarking, uh, which should be you know used straight out of the book, is uh, probably a bit hard to do. But, uh, but I think it's also in, in, important to remember uh, on, on the what, why we are doing it, the purpose of it, what's the outcome of it, and if it's you know to improve yourself and and to take this as inspiration, it's uh, it's uh, good to, to start with the benchmark to see uh, what are the trends, what we are doing compares with others, for example, and to learn from the best uh, in, the, in the group of this. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks very much, Terry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's wrap this up. You know, assuming that we, we finally managed to create best practice guidelines, how do we then as an industry ensure that we, we, we you know, how do we ensure compliance and accountability? Is this something we can do as an industry? Do we need to be persuaded and encouraged by you know, regulatory forces? M Matthias, uh, what are your thoughts on how we as an industry can remain accountable? Yeah, I think that needs to come from the customers. They need to put pressure on us telecom operators to be much more sustainable. I think that's really where it needs to come from. We did a benchmark last year where 85% of the respondents said that they were prepared to pay sustainable and more renewable energy. But at the end of the day, they don't. Uh, it feels like at the end of the day, the cost is the most important thing for them anyway, and therefore they buy according to that. When they start to buy from the one that can show numbers, how much energy they consume, that's when we will see real results from us telecom operators doing good here. Thanks very much, Matthias. Uh, Anna, uh, as we hear so much um, in our industry, it's all about the customer. We must not lose sight of the customer. That's what we're here for. So it is, it's all this, as Matthias says, it's going to be, it's going to come from and be driven by customers. Yeah, I think it's a very good point, but I think customer alone um, will not probably bring it to the um, level of reliability we are talking here about, right? So. Uh, I began my career uh, back in the days in accounting and finance department. And, you know, like um, the shareholders, they, they really want to have that uh, top line and bottom line number to be uh, reliable <laughs> and accountable, right? So, and uh, CFOs go to jail. So no one has to go to jail, of course, uh, for reporting um, um, maybe not uh, reliable energy consumption data, but um, more push from uh, regulatory um, uh, authorities uh, might help as well to um, to put a, a proper framework, right? So a combination, I think, uh, uh, of a customer push and regulatory push could uh, could do the trick. Great, thank you very much, Anna and Terry. Let's come across to to you for your thoughts on this. No, I, I agree with the, both the previous speakers that, of course, there are expectations from the customers and uh, and what I would call the business environment. Uh, so, so there are clear expectations stated from from both of those teams, and uh, there are enterprise customers are so very very direct in the dialogues that uh, they have expectations on us as a, as a you know a, a sustainable and and uh, and uh, responsible provider of these kind of services that we also are reporting and and engaging with them on on, on these systems, and it could also be. Uh, or, or on energy efficiency and of course definitely also on the climate impact uh, and it also i think it was mentioned earlier as well uh, they also would like us to you know engage in in 
in services uh, on, to help them uh, uh, what reduce their energy consumption and, and also the climate footprint. And of course, I think Anna re referred to that it's a good thing in the way, way that energy efficiency is uh, has a very incentive to 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 uh, the cost efficiency or finance, if you want. Less energy typically turns into lower cost. Uh, so so the, there is a full alignment there between the, the finance uh, and, the, and the technical people on, on the, in that sense. And of course also on the climate side that uh, the correlation between energy consumption and climate is also quite, uh, quite simple to, to show. Of course uh, then it comes into the energy sources and those kind of discussions. But uh, there, are, uh, there are ways to, uh, to, uh, to improve the energy consumption uh, which can also definitely show uh, the climate impact. And definitely also I said energy efficiency. There are sun setting or, or, or uh, turning off, uh, switching off legacy systems for example. We are been uh, switching off a copper network uh, recently uh, among the first on the, in the world. We have sunsetting 3G, for example, in several markets and so on. And this we also close, we see both on the climate uh, uh, reporting and also on our financial or the cost side. Great, Terry. Thanks very much for that. And, uh, you know, the, the, the days of low cost energy do seem to be well and truly over. So this is another in incentive why we've got to focus so much on, on, on this area. Thanks so much, everybody. I feel we're making a great start here. Uh, we've got to leave the discussion there, though. Thank you all very much for taking part today and sharing your views. Now, if you're watching this on day one of the Green Network Summit, then please send us any questions you have and we'll answer them in our live Q&A show later today. And don't forget to view the other panel discussions and interviews in this year's summit. For now, though, thank you for watching and goodbye.